the starter knife and fork. In this lesson, we're going to look at the starter knife and fork. We'll be looking at their appearance and purpose, placement, where they go on the setting, and replacement cutlery, what to do if you don't have a starter knife or fork available. Let's start with appearance and purpose. The starter knife and fork are the perfect size and shape to enjoy your starter. Generally, the dishes served during the starter course are smaller and more delicate than the main course meal, and so the starter cutlery is also smaller and lighter in weight. Because of the size, the starter knife is also often used as a butter knife on the setting. Compare the starter knife and main course knife. Notice the size difference. This is because starter dishes generally don't require heavy cutting. This is not the case with the main course knife, which cuts through the heavier food that is usually served as a main course. Hang on. Did you notice anything wrong with this main course knife? It has a dirty smudge on the blade and should never be placed in front of a guest. Well done if you noticed this. Moving on. With the starter fork, the same principles apply as with the starter knife. The starter fork is smaller and more dainty than the main course fork, because the starter course is usually lighter. Now let's talk about where to place them on the setting. As guests progress through their dining experience, they will use their cutlery from the outside in. So where do you think the starter cutlery will go? The starter knife and fork are placed on the outside of the main course knife and fork, because a starter comes before a main course. As you know, most people are right-handed. Now if you think about eating with a knife and fork, it's the knife that does most of the work, moving back and forth. For this reason, it's most comfortable to place the knife on the right and the fork on the left. So a rule when setting cutlery is that when a knife is paired with a fork, as they are here, the knife will always go on the right hand side and the fork will be placed on the left hand side. There are two ways to place forks on the setting. The way which is most common is to place it with the prongs pointing upwards. However, at some establishments they might be placed with prongs pointing down, like this. Make sure you know what the standard is at your property. So, what about guests that we notice are left-handed then? How do you think we can adjust or tailor our service for them? If you notice that they switch their cutlery around, you can deliver their fork on the right and their knife on the left next time. Finally, let's finish off with replacement cutlery. Sometimes, certain cutlery items will not be available, or perhaps there won't be enough in stock. But you obviously still need to provide the guest with cutlery. In the case of not having starter cutlery, a main course knife and fork is the best replacement, since they are the closest in shape and size. But remember to be consistent. Don't give the guest a starter knife paired with a main course fork. So what did you learn in this lesson? Can you remember the three main points? The appearance and purpose of the starter cutlery, their placement, where they go on the setting, and replacements, what to do if you don't have a starter knife or fork available. Well done if you were able to remember all three. If not, go back and have another look at this lesson. Good luck! The main course knife and fork. Let's take a look at the main course knife and fork, and in particular, the following points. Their appearance and purpose, placement, where they go on the setting, and replacement cutlery. What to do if you don't have main course cutlery. Let's begin with appearance and purpose. The main course knife and fork are the perfect size and shape to enjoy a main meal. 
Generally, the main course is heavier and comes in bigger portions than the starter. This in turn requires cutlery that is slightly bigger and heavier. Have a look at this table setting. What do you notice about the main course knife and fork? The main course knife and fork are the biggest items of cutlery on the table. To show this, hold the starter knife and main course knife next to each other. The main course knife is much larger. After appearance and purpose comes placement. Can you remember the rule on where to place knives and forks when paired? When a knife and fork are paired, the knife is always placed on the right hand side of the setting and the fork is always placed on the left hand side. The same is true of the main course knife and fork. The knife goes on the right hand side and the fork on the left. They are set opposite each other with enough space to place the main course plate down in between them. Lastly, replacement cutlery. If you don't have any main course knives and forks, the best solution is to use the next biggest size of cutlery that you have available to you. This may mean that your starter knife and fork will be used for your starter and your main course. If this is the case, simply place your starter knife and fork in the positions where you would find your main course knife and fork. Remember, however, that just because the same cutlery is being used for the different courses, that new, clean cutlery still needs to be fetched and brought to the guest for the main course. Have a look at this play setting for a right-handed guest. If you remember all the points made during this lesson, you'll quickly be able to spot what's wrong with this picture. Write down what you notice. Well done if you noticed that the knives and forks were placed down on the wrong side. Another well done if you saw that the starter and main course cutlery were swapped. And a special well done if you notice that the one fork's design was different to the rest. This is what your setting should look like. Well done on finishing this lesson on the main course knife and fork. For most fish dishes, we'll be looking at the appearance and purpose of fish cutlery, placement, where to place them on the setting, and replacement cutlery, what to do if you don't have fish cutlery available. As usual, let's start with appearance and purpose. As you can see, the fish knife looks slightly different to the other types of knives. It is a pointed knife with a blunt blade. This is because this knife is used to separate the delicate segments of fish, rather than actually cutting through the fish. You'll also notice that the fish knife has a pointed tip, which can be used to slip in between the skin and the flesh of the fish. While most fish dishes will be served with a fish knife, there are also exceptions. If you are serving heavy fish that is not flaky, such as a tuna steak, it is best served with a serrated knife or steak knife for the guest to cut through the fish. The fish fork is similar in size to the starter fork since both are used for lighter meals. But the fish fork looks slightly different. What do you notice here? The fish fork also has four prongs, but with a deeper rift between the middle two prongs. To help you remember which is the fish knife and fork, think of the dish that it is used for. Fish is not a heavy meal, but is usually delicate and light compared to the main course. Just like the fish knife and fork when compared to the main course knife and fork. Let's take a look at where the fish knife and fork are placed. Just as with the other knives and forks we've looked at, the fish knife is always set on the right hand side, 
and the fish fork is always set on the left hand side of the plate. Whenever a flaky fish course is ordered, this is the cutlery that needs to be set down. The fish course is usually enjoyed before the main course and so will be set outside the main course cutlery. Lastly, let's move on to the replacement cutlery. Some establishments have moved away from using special fish cutlery. So if your establishment does not use fish cutlery, or you have run out of fish cutlery, a starter knife and fork will do perfectly as a substitute. This is because it is smaller, lighter, and more delicate than the main course cutlery, and will be better suited to separating the delicate fish. To summarize, you should have learned the following in this lesson. The appearance and purpose of fish cutlery, the placement of fish cutlery, and the proper replacement cutlery if you don't have fish cutlery. If you had trouble answering these questions, rewatch this lesson to pick up on all the points. Remember to find out whether you use fish cutlery at your establishment. The steak knife. In this lesson, we'll be learning about the following. The appearance and purpose of the steak knife, the placement of the steak knife, and the proper replacement cutlery if you don't have a steak knife. Firstly, appearance and purpose. The steak knife is used specifically for cutting steak or tougher meat dishes. This knife has a very sharp, serrated blade that is specially designed to cut through meat. This allows guests to cut through meat easily and effortlessly, rather than having to struggle with a normal knife. Can you imagine how a guest would struggle to cut through a steak with a starter knife? But a beautifully sharp steak knife guides through the meat easily. Next, placement. By now, you can probably guess where the steak knife is placed. The steak knife is used with a fork, so, just as with other knives that are paired with forks, the steak knife will always go on the right hand side of the plate. The main course fork is often paired with the steak knife because it is similar in size and goes on the left hand side. Dishes containing heavier meats, such as steak, are usually served as a main course, so the steak knife will most often be placed nearest to the plate on the inside of the other items of cutlery. Finally, replacement cutlery. If your establishment does not have steak knives, a main course knife is the next best option because it is also slightly serrated and would work better than a knife with a smooth edge, such as a starter knife. After this lesson, you should know exactly the appearance and purpose of the steak knife, its placement on the setting and which knife is the best replacement cutlery for a steak knife. Well done! The next piece of cutlery we're going to look at is the butter knife. We'll be looking at the appearance and purpose of the butter knife, placement, where to place it on the setting, and replacement cutlery. What to do if you don't have a butter knife available. The butter knife is a small, rounded knife with a wide blade that is specifically designed for spreading butter. This is a small, dainty knife which fits neatly onto the side plate or the side of the butter dish. Hold the butter knife and the main course knife next to each other and notice the size difference. The butter knife is much smaller and shorter than the main course knife and its wide blade is perfect for slicing and spreading butter. Have a look at the following two scenes and see which one looks right.
based on what you just saw, which side do you think the butter knife should be placed? You're correct if you said the left. Since most guests are right-handed, it is much more comfortable to butter bread across your body, holding the bread in your left hand and the butter knife in your right. If it were set on the right, it would be awkward for the guest to move their wrist with their elbow cocked to the side, as opposed to if it were set on the left. They might even bump into another guest on the side. Some of you might have noticed that this sets the butter knife apart from all the other knives we've discussed so far. All the other knives were paired and used with forks, and so, according to the rule, were placed on the right. The butter knife, on the other hand, is used on its own, and as you saw, is much more comfortable on the left-hand side of the setting. In fact, the butter knife is the only knife ever placed on the left-hand side, so it's an easy exception to remember. The butter knife is also different in that it is placed with the blade facing away from the setting, making it easy to pick up and butter the bread. If your establishment does not have butter knives, a starter knife is a perfect replacement because it's similar in size. So by now, you should know and understand these main points. The appearance and purpose of the butter knife. Placement. Where to place it on the setting. And replacement cutlery. What to do if you don't have a butter knife available. Well done if you could remember all three. If you're unsure about anything, quickly rewatch this lesson to make sure that you learn about what you don't know. Talk about its appearance and purpose, its placement on the setting, and as always, which replacement cutlery to use if you don't have a cheese knife. So let's start with appearance and purpose. So, which knife is it? As the name suggests, the cheese knife, this one, is used during the cheese course. You'll notice it has a rather unique shape. It has a thin, sometimes curved blade and fork-like spokes at the end of the knife. The thin blade is to finely slice the cheese, as well as any accompaniments served with the cheese, such as grapes or figs. It also has fork-like spokes at the end to pick up the slices of cheese or accompaniments and place them onto a biscuit or bread. Let's take a look at where the cheese knife is placed on the setting. When the cheese is served with bread or a cracker, the cheese knife is usually not paired with a fork, since the cheese and crackers can be eaten elegantly. On the other hand, the cheese knife is often paired with a starter fork if the cheese is enjoyed without a biscuit. As you can imagine, the guest doesn't want to stick the knife or their fingers into their mouth. Rather, the starter fork can be used. And so, because it is paired with a fork, placing the cheese knife follows the usual rule. When a knife is paired with a fork, the knife is placed on the right-hand side of the setting. Finally, replacement cutlery. If your establishment does not have cheese knives, a starter knife also works well. However, if this is the case, be sure to place a starter fork down too, because a starter knife doesn't have the prongs that the cheese knife does. This will allow the guest to pick up both cheese and preserves with the starter fork. Why do you think starter cutlery is the best substitute? The reason why starter cutlery is used as a substitute for a cheese knife is because the items are small and delicate enough to accompany a cheese course, which is generally a lighter course. So, to summarize, you now know the appearance and purpose of the cheese knife, its placement on the table setting, and which replacement cutlery to use if you don't have cheese knives at your establishment. Well done, and good luck putting your knowledge into practice.
the oyster fork. In this lesson, we'll look at a dainty little piece of cutlery called the oyster fork. We'll be looking at the appearance and purpose of the oyster fork. Placement, where to place it on the setting. And replacement cutlery, what to do if you don't have an oyster fork available. Let's start with the appearance and purpose. The oyster fork is used when the guest is enjoying oysters. This is one of the smallest forks you will ever see. It has three short, wide prongs which can be slid under the flesh of the oyster and used to cut the oyster out of its shell for the guest to enjoy. The oyster fork can also be used to squeeze the lemon or lime juice onto the oyster by piercing the lemon or lime. Now let's look at the placement. The oyster fork is an unusual piece of cutlery, but its placement makes sense when you know how the guest will use it. When eating oysters, the fork does most of the work. The oyster shell is held in the left hand, while the fork to lift the oyster from the shell in the right hand. This means that the oyster fork is used on its own. There's no oyster knife. And so the oyster fork doesn't follow the rule of a paired set of knives and forks. Unlike most forks, the oyster fork is placed on the right hand side of the setting, the side that the guest will hold it. Also, oysters are usually served as a starter, so the fork is set on the outside of the other cutlery. Lastly, let's finish off with the replacement for the oyster fork. If you don't have oyster forks at your establishment, Use the next smallest fork available, which may be a snail fork or a starter fork. To summarize, you should now know the following, the appearance and purpose of the oyster fork, where to place it on the table, and what to do if you don't have one. Well done if you could remember all three. If not, have a quick rewatch of the lesson to pick up anything you may have missed. The teaspoon and demi tasse spoon. In this lesson, we'll look at the two smaller spoons, the teaspoon and demi tasse spoon. We'll be looking at the appearance and purpose of these spoons, their placement, either on the setting or with the beverage, and their replacements. What to do if you don't have one of these spoons. As usual, appearance and purpose. By now, you would have noticed that there is a relationship between the size of the cutlery and the dish with which it is served. Starters are smaller and lighter and are served with cutlery that is smaller. Mains are generally heavier and more substantial, so they are served with heavier, larger pieces of cutlery. The same is true of the spoons you will use during service, as you'll see in this lesson. The demi tasse spoon and the teaspoon are both small spoons and usually accompany beverages such as tea, coffee or espressos. The demi tasse spoon is the smaller of the two. So, when do you think the demi tasse spoon should be used? The demi tasse spoon is the smaller of the two and so is usually used when serving espressos. The cup is smaller and so the spoon should be too. It is also perfect for accompanying small sugar bowls or for enjoying an amuse bush. These dishes are also small and dainty. The teaspoon, on the other hand, is used when serving tea, coffee, and other hot beverages in standard sized cups or mugs. For example, cappuccinos and americanos. Next, let's learn about placement. When either of these spoons are served with hot beverages, you should place them behind the cup with the handle facing the guest's right hand. This makes it easier for the guest to pick up the spoon, rather than having to reach around the cup to reach the handle from the left. 
Remember how we adjusted the placement of knives and forks for a left-handed guest? Do you think something similar can be done with a teaspoon? If you thought that the handle should face to the left, well done. Lastly, let's finish off with replacement cutlery. If you don't have a demitasse spoon, a teaspoon is an adequate substitute. The same applies the other way around. What is important, however, is that the same sized spoon is used consistently throughout service. This means that if you must serve an espresso with a teaspoon, all the espressos must be served with a teaspoon. This way, your service will be consistent and your guests will appreciate your attention to the finest details. To check that you remember the main points of this lesson, see if you can spot anything wrong in this picture. Well done if you noticed that the tea was served with a demitasse spoon, which is inconsistent and incorrect if a teaspoon is available. Similarly, the espresso was served with a teaspoon when a demitasse spoon was available. You should know the following about the teaspoon and demitasse spoon. Their appearance and purpose, their placement, and the correct replacement cutlery when you don't have either one of the spoons. Good luck and well done.